Hi, it's Patty from PS Paper Crafts. Thanks for joining me again. And we're going to make this pretty Easter card using my, what well, I think my favorite stamp set in the catalog or probably my most used one, the Arranger Wreath. And I'm using this little bunny from the um, Springtime Joy stamp set, which is really great. So this Arranger Wreath has coordinating dies and it has all different seasons. So I've made spring, fall, Christmas, uh, now we'll be making Easter, Thanksgiving, just all kinds of things. I mainly cut out the the two layers of the wreath, and we'll do that in this card today. And then I did fussy cut this little, little bunny. I think it's so cute. And I made a card the other day with the lamb, and I just love the wreath. Isn't that pretty? I tried to stay away from purple because I've been making a lot of purple cards, and I love that for Easter and spring. So this was a card on my blog from the other day, and this is the one we'll make today. And you can make it a spring card if you wanted to use Welcome Spring and put some flowers, uh, some spring flowers you could cut out. You can stamp them and then cut them. You can even do Valentine's. I don't know if I made a Valentine. Hmm. Might have missed that one. So let's get started. I'm going to actually do all my die cutting and everything here. Usually I die cut off camera. So I have all my pieces and I'm using the Melon Mambo for the, the main card base and some of the colors, the ink and stuff. And then I'm using um, Soft Sea Foam and Pear Pizzazz to do the wreaths. But before we do that, I wanna just stamp the Easter eggs. So I have them mounted. And I'll do one set in the Melon Mambo and the other set in Daffodil Delight. And I'll just do them on a scrap of paper, which is right here. And I'll do the bunny as well while we're stamping. And then I'll do my die cutting. So it's really nice. You can just stamp two of them together. And then there's also a die to cut two of them together. Now before... I stamp again, I want to just clean. Let me just get my uh, chamois here. I want to clean the stamp because I don't want to have the Melon Mambo in the Daffodil Delight. Okay, so now we will do another set in the Daffodil Delight. And we'll just put these over here and close this up and let's do our die cutting and I also want to do this embossing I, I wanted it to look like it was on a door I don't know if that makes sense but that's what I did so let's get our embossing done first and then we'll do our cutting let me get this stuff out of the way and get my Stampin emboss and cutting machine and for the embossing, it's a 3D embossing folder. So I will be taking only the, the base platform. And I have my planks. This is the old one. It's a 3D, but they re, redid them. But this works for me, so I'm sticking with it. Um, if you buy them now, um, I think it's a Stampin' Up! on them. And they're made a little bit differently. They redid their embossing folders, and they really work well, but I didn't want to buy a new one, so I'm sticking with the one I have. So I'm putting it in with the fold up going forward and putting my embossing plate on it, and I'll just run it through. Actually, I'm sorry. This is the old one, and I need to use a clear plate. Sorry about that. So they, they redid, if you have an old embossing folder that's 3D, they redid um, the layer. So this is, it's actually the dynamic textured impressions embossing folder. So it's not a 3D. So you're using a glass plate, but if you get the new one, it'll work with the embossing plate. I hope I didn't just confuse you, but I have a mixture of old. So what they did was they had the original, like kind of thin embossing folders, and then they came out with this textured dynamic, and then they came out with the 3D. So they redid the textured dynamic ones to become 3D. 
So if you have a texture dynamic, use one clear plate. If you have the 3D, use the gray plate. And if you have any questions on that, just email me, patty at pspapercrafts.com, and I'll help you out. I'm not here to confuse you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to cut one of these with pear pizzazz. And I'll just feed it in. So on this sandwich, I have the number one, the base, the number two, which is for die cutting, one of the clear plates, and then the die cut facing down, and then another clear plate on top. And that's your basic sandwich for doing die cutting. And this really cuts out nicely. It pretty much um, cuts it very easily. You just have to be careful taking it out because there's so many pieces that kind of... Here I am saying it cut it out nicely and it seems like it didn't. Let's see really making a liar out of me today here. It's just that the pieces, um, they're so like interconnected here. It's almost like a puzzle. So just very gently take it out. Let's see. There we go. All right, <laughs> and then we'll just pop this one out as well. So it's just, as I said, like a puzzle. So you just have to be careful to get all the pieces apart from each other. Okay, Whew. got that done. And then there's these little couple of pieces in here, and I will just use my um, my take your tick pick tool and just pop these out. There's just a couple of them. You can use the brush, but there's not that many of them. And actually, they're probably going to be covered with the other layer. So I'm just going to poke these out. Okay, so we have that piece done. And now we'll cut out the other piece and that's a little bit um, easier actually. So we'll put that down. And this is the more leafy one. And we'll put that over here. And run that through. And then we'll do the Easter eggs and I think we're done. So this one pops right out. Okay, and then if you, there's little holes in here that help you get the cut piece out. Sometimes it'll fall right out, but if it doesn't, you can just poke out those little holes and then just gently pull it. You don't want to rip it. Okay, so now we have that piece and let's do the Easter eggs. So the nice thing is when you cut the, the pears, the hearts and the eggs, you can cut two of them at a time. You can stamp them together and then you can cut them together. So we'll just put these on like this. If you want, you can put a piece of post-it note. I like to just really like lay this very gently on it and hold it so that it stays in place. And I'm gonna go through and back. So we have the two melon mambo eggs. Come on. And then we'll do the two daffodil delight eggs. And the same thing. Okay, 
So let's put this away. And we have these eggs. And you can put whatever color Easter eggs you want. So we're done with our dies. We're done with these. And now we can start putting our card together. Oh, we have to stamp our little bunny rabbit. So let's do that next. And then I'm gonna fussy cut him out. So I'm, I'm stamping in black memento ink. I'll stamp right here. And then we'll do some coloring. So what I did was I colored the little bunny in light smoky slate. And I, I wanted um, the bunny to be very light. I wanted, I, I didn't even want this amount of darkness. So I'm going to use the color lifter and take some of the color off. Cause I want her to be just a lightly colored gray bunny. Okay, so we'll just color below the flowers. And then the little ears. You can make the ears pink if you wanted. But it's nice. These are the Stampin' Blends that are alcohol markers. And there's a marker called the Color Lifter. And this actually, if you make a mistake, it takes the color off, but it also just lightens up whatever you've colored. Sorry about the dog barking. That's my Mr. Bailey. And he doesn't bark very often. He's really not a barky dog, but when he hears somebody in the yard, there's somebody outside behind me doing some work. Of course, it's when I'm doing a video, but so I don't know if you can see this. It makes it just a little bit lighter and I like the way it looks. You can make a, the bunny a light, light brown. You could probably use light crumb cake or something like that. And then I'll do, I'm using light melon mambo and I'm using the the bullet point side and I'll just do the, the flowers very lightly. I wanted her to be kind of soft looking, but I like the melon mambo. So I'm making these all the same color. You can make them different colors if you want. I think I'll make this one for my granddaughter, Gianna who's six months old, she won't know it, but her mom I know will love the little flower wreath. That's kind of her style. And then I'm using the light, or this might be dark. This is dark soft sea foam on the leaves. So I tried to keep the colors, you know, all together what, what we're using for the whole card also in the coloring. Okay, so now I'll fussy cut her. And I'll speed this up. I'm going right up to the black line with it. I'm not leaving any white space. So I will speed this up. Okay, so she's all done. And one thing I like to do if I fussy cut something right up to the black line is I get my Stampin' Right black marker and I just kind of go along the sides and fill in any white that's showing. It kind of gives you a nice dark um, outline. So of course, you know, I don't cut perfectly. It just helps to define it. Okay, so she's all done. Now we can put the card together. And let's see, so I'm gonna put this down. You can use, this is the raised side and then this is the 
kind of the deboss side, which I liked better. I like it going in. Um, I'm going to use my liquid glue because there's a lot of, you know, nooks and crannies, I'll call them, because of the embossing. So I like to just make sure the adhesive gets all in there and I find the liquid glue works best. Okay, so we have that. I'm also going to use liquid glue on this. So I'm just going around that rim where the leaves are coming off. So just put a little bit of glue all the way around and let's put it down on this and try to match the circle and the liquid glue will give you that time to kind of adjust it and get it lined up right okay that looks good to me so before we put it down i want to make my um my sentiment and i took the sentiment from the arranger wreath happy easter so i already have that mounted and i'll do it on a three-quarter strip of card stock of the basic white and we'll do that in the melon mambo ink and it's nice that it's the photopolymer I can see and get it straight. All right. And then what I use is my uh, triple banner punch. One of my favorite punches. And I'll just feed it through and banner one end. And then I'll just cut it. This is just a strip that I had as scrap. So just... Um, Use one end and cut it down. And then we've got the Easter. And then I did the same thing. This is a, I think it's 7 eighths. I'll have it in my blog though, um, pspapercrafts.com. And you can see the size. So I just wanted to go up a little bit so it had this little, little border to uh, show through. And then I'm going to snip this. I'm going to try to run it through so I can see where it is. And I'll see where it is, and then I'll pull it back a little bit. And there we go. So let's put this together, and I'll use some liquid glue, and then we can figure out where we want to put the wreath. We'll kind of lay everything out. Before I adhere things, I like to get them all placed in the right position. Okay, so let's put some liquid glue on this. I've got some uh, hanging chads there on the punch. There we go. All right, so we'll just go right around the wreath and then place that on the card. Now, if you wanted to put a bow, there's a stamped bow, or not a stamped bow, a, where did I put the, um, the dies? Here we go. There's a bow you can cut out or you can tie a bow. I didn't put a bow on this one because I have the bunny rabbit there. So let's see, we'll put the bunny rabbit right here. And I'm going to put the sentiment and the rabbit and the eggs on with dimensionals. So we'll just put three dimensionals on this and get this in place and then we can Place everything else. I can't believe Easter is right around the corner, to be honest. 
Everything is going by so fast. And can you believe it's been a year that we've been in this COVID situation? I'm glad that things are starting to open up. I got my mom, I'm taking her later for her second shot. She's 89 years old and she lives right next door to me. So I wanted to be sure I've been very, very careful because I don't want to get her in any uh, dangerous situation. So I'll be glad when she gets her second shot. I'll still, of course, be careful. And hopefully they'll open it up to the rest of us. I'm just a tad too young to get the, um, the shot, which is a good thing <laughs> on one hand. So we'll just put these, let's just lay them out before I put them all down so I have them in a good position. All right, and then we'll just take the backings off. I had a hard time getting her vaccine appointment like everybody else, I think, but it worked. She's going and hopefully she has no side effects. I hear the second one, you can get side effects. So the other thing that I did was I put a um, the inside and I put some rhinestones on the outside. Here they are. So I only put two on. I put a teeny tiny one. These are such small flowers. I really didn't want to go. I wish we had smaller of these. So I put the smallest one right here on the biggest flower, the smallest rhinestone that is. And then I put the medium size one right here. If you wanted to add them to these other flowers, if you had smaller ones, I think these would be too big. And then on the inside of the card, we put <clears throat> the sentiment, and I took the sentiment from the Springtime Joy. Easter is a lovely reminder of new beginnings, and I did a butterfly and an Easter basket. So that's what I am going to do again. And I'll use the black memento ink for the Easter basket. And the butterfly as well. And this butterfly, I'll tell you, the first time I did them, I did them upside down. I had them coming on this side. <laughs> and I thought, wow, his antenna are on the bottom. That didn't turn out too good, but I don't know if anybody would even notice. It was on a different card that I made, and I was like, wow, that's uh, upside down. Okay, so now we want to get the sentiment and our melon mambo ink. You could also just do this in black ink if you wanted to. And we'll put this right up here. I don't know why I'm straightening it, because I can't see what the stamp looks like anyway. I'm guiding by this bottom part, and I think it came out fine. And then I will color, using the same color scheme, the um, soft sea foam, the Easter basket. And you can do the light and the dark. I just did it all in the dark. But you could do the handle in one color. But I thought this was pretty. You, If you had browns, you can do a, you know, um, crumb cake or soft suede but I thought for Easter that the green would be good and see I went out a little bit so here's that color lifter I don't know if you can see it but I went off a little bit and it'll just take the color right off and I think on this one I'll do the eggs in melon mambo and the daffodil delight I'll do two in the Melon Mambo, and I'll do two in the Daffodil Delight. Just to add a little bit of color. You can do each one in a different color. And then the Butterfly, I'll do the body in the dark. This is the dark Daffodil Delight. 
and those little dots. And then I'll use a light daffodil delight to do the wings. Okay, pretty. And then we just have to put this in the card. And I'm going to use my stamp and seal for this one. And the card is all done. So these are great sets that go together. I mean, you can use them separately. You don't need to put this little bunny on the card. You can put spring flowers and the eggs if you wanted to just stick with the um, arrange a wreath. But I love this little rabbit and the little um, lamb. So these are the cards. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you next time. Bye.